Hey everyone, this is Vanessa and this is Spark Talks. Today we're going to be talking about integrated marketing. For those of you who don't know, I am the firm marketing manager at Spark. I do all the marketing for the agency itself. And my guests today are Chris Hampson, project manager, and Shane, who is the VP of Strategic Insights. Hi. I have no last name. <laughs> Just kidding. Shane Jordan. <laughs> I want to start it off on a laugh. Anyway, <laughs> I'm excited for this podcast, so let's take it away. All right. If you guys won't mind, could you please tell me in a very short sentence or two what you do at Spark? Oh, sure. Uh, this is Shane Jordan. I'll, I'll go ahead and start it off. Um, I am vice president of Strategic Insights here, and uh, I have the very lucky job of, uh, you know, not only being able to work with just about every client um, as Strategic Insights, um, you know, part of what we do in our department is measurement reporting of pro program success. So I have the opportunity to work with a lot of brilliant uh, public relations professionals, but also a lot of marketing professionals as well, um, including uh, the gentleman next to me, uh, Chris Hampson, who's project manager. And, um, you know, so I, that, I think that's one of the really great things uh, of, the, of my position is that uh, I really get to work across the board on a lot of our offerings and then really kind of utilizing, um, you know, intelligence from uh, data that we might be doing in order to inform program strategy. So uh, excited to be on today's blog. Thanks. Uh, I'm Christopher Hampson. I'm the project manager here at Spark. Fairly new, but uh, I've already been exposed to a lot of really interesting projects of uh, very wide range videos, websites, uh, social campaigns. And I get to get all of these subject matter experts together and uh, figure out the best strategy to reach our goal uh, in a concise budget for our clients, as well as something that works really well for us. Uh, and really come out with some really quality end products that our clients are really happy with. All right, it sounds like you guys are perfect for this podcast. So let's get into integrated marketing. Shane, what is integrated marketing? Sure thing. Thanks so much. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to, for this conversation, define our, our integrated marketing, our inter integrated services, um, you know, for this conversation. And um, I guess I would go ahead and, and, and start that off by saying that integrated marketing would be... Um, kind of combining multiple marketing elements that work together, really supporting each other, much like an ecosystem, all working toward a common goal. Um, some examples include, you know, public relations with, you know, social media support on that, um, with paid media support on that, influencer marketing, how that works with SEO, um, everything that happens with email marketing, et cetera. So each one of these components really play their part to support our larger, our larger brand objective. So when we talk about, you know, different forms of marketing and integrated, there are, there are certain ways that these things can be put together, much like almost like a puzzle that can, that can really put together a nice, beautiful picture um, of a of a strategy for a brand and so that's how I, I view integrated marketing. So if we combine all these services together what exactly does a client get out of it as opposed to just doing one or the other service? Sure. So the client has the opportunity to collaborate with, you know, really multiple specialists who are all kind of sharing ideas and experiences, and it adds up to more of a holistic view of the marketing landscape. So um, it really it really allows the clients to benefit from, you know, a host of specialized services under one umbrella, which really, you know, saves a lot of time, increases the intelligence of the work, and really allows, um, you know, for more cost-effective activity to be happening. Um, I really like to look at it as kind of like a one stop shop or kind of like a mosaic of where the best and the brightest pieces come together, create a beautiful, well orchestrated kind of symphony of strategy for the client that can be executed on. So I'm thinking a specific example might be if you have traditional PR in which you launch a product and you write a uh, press release about that, you get it out in the media, but you also put it on social or you have an ad campaign. What else could you add to that? Right, sure. Actually, I'd like to, I would just offer to back up a little bit and say that we would start with a client goal or objective. Um, and let's say that their objective is to, I don't know, I'll just take it to the simplest form, like it's form, some form of customer acquisition. Let's say they need a certain number of downloads of their mobile app or they want certain orders, you know, from their website, from their e-commerce platform 
platform on their website. So um, we would kind of look at, you know, what are all the things that would take in order to uh, to really drive the awareness and the engagement and all the things that it takes in order to have a, a really great comprehensive kind of media plan and strategy that could really support that common goal, right? So we'd want to drive that awareness and PR is a fantastic cost effective way to do that. So, you know, we have, we have fantastic teams that specialize in different categories, be it, let's say, like Bluetooth or IoT or, you know, investment, you know, it could be really fintech, it could be anything, right? Consumer products, like all of this stuff. And so, you know, what they, they specialize in those certain things. And so they know the right media to go after and they'll look to get articles placed in the best publication that can kind of drive that awareness. But we understand that consumers and other types of customers um, will see a, a product or a service once and um, they'll need to see it more than one time for that for that to resonate with them as, as a customer, right? And so, um, you know, they might see something in a traditional press outlet, but then that'll be reinforced by what we're doing on social media. They might also see an ad, an ad come to them and that could become like a banner ad or that could be something through social media or maybe they hear something on the radio, right? And so it's further reinforcing something to this uh, to these customers, hopefully they're target customers. And so when you get those multiple points of reinforcement, um, you know, a lot of studies have proven that, you know, people will take action beyond that, right? And kind of get them down the marketing funnel. And so we understand the marketing funnel. We understand the phases of awareness. They understand the phases of consideration and of intent and ultimately purchase, right? And so we want to, through all of our different efforts, kind of lead customers down that path and get them to that kind of holy grail of conversion. But it doesn't even really stop there because you want to turn those customers into positive um, brand advocates, right? And have them kind of promote you know, indirectly for uh, the product or service as well through their, you know, hopefully their successful or their enjoyable experience with that. So, you know, I mentioned a few different types of marketing that can kind of go into that. Um, they don't always have to go in at once. I know we have a, um, a clients that will come to us and say, hey, what can you really do for maybe 25K a, bunch, a, a month budget? If we were to concentrate all of that into PR, we'd really be leaving kind of a lot on the table. Um, or if we just did that in kind of social or other digital forms, we might still be leaving something on the table. So they don't always have to happen in parallel. And so sometimes you can really use integrated campaigns to come between announcement cycles of PR. So if they have something great to announce each quarter, right, from a product standpoint, we can really, you know, use an integrated approach to keep the momentum high between announcement cycles and throughout the entire year. A client might get to that holy grail through an integrated campaign, but what does the agency get out of all of this? Sure. Um, the agency is able to offer all of these, and I kind of mentioned being able to be, have an offering that is, is kind of that one-stop shop, kind of that umbrella offering that really allows the client to come in, have that collective intelligence, that those collective kind of communications all happening in one space on one team. So the client doesn't have to go to multiple sources and kind of string things together and cobble things together in order to kind of paint that larger picture. We can do that from our agency, and like I said, we have you know great people that really understand kind of what each of their services or offerings does and where it fits within the client's funnel, if you will, and then how we can all work together as one team, really, you know, under one roof that can help kind of, you know, like just have effective communications, effective strategy, and really be able to kind of capitalize on all of those things that are happening in concert together. Yeah, the one-stop shop, I mean, it's having everybody under one roof just eliminates so much static not being co-located being able to have everybody in the same room and actually look at the same pieces and be able to point to it and fully understand what it is the client needs to be taken all the way to fruition, it's essential if you're trying to do a big campaign, even a small campaign, right. where you're going across multiple channels. Yeah, this brings me to my question to you, Chris. So uh, Shane, I know that you speak to clients, you're very client facing. Uh, Chris, you work with the teams internally a lot. And I wanted to know what it's like to work with an integrated team where everyone has a different specialization and you're kind of that overall view bringing everybody together. Yeah, I mean, I, I probably take a too nerdy of a, a perspective when I'm looking at how our services work together. Uh, I, Nerdy's cool, man. Nerdy is really cool. <laughs> Anybody listening to this podcast, just know that. Uh, so we, we have true experts in a lot of different creative fields and social and creative narrative. Uh, and a lot of times they run together or they mesh really well, just like Shane was saying. If you're trying to achieve a goal, they really do need to work in tandem with one another. Uh, I, I kind of look at it as like Voltron. Like 
you you could have five robot lions, but when they come together, and make Voltron, that's something special. And that's what we do when we really analyze what the client's needs are, say through a narrative. Uh, we figure out what direction they really should be heading. And a lot of times it's not solved with just a website or just a video. A video on its own really doesn't do anything without the right marketing behind it. So having a good social campaign along with it really uh, propels the client to the right space that they need to be and gets the attention that they need. I just wanted to um, pause real quick and just recognize that I've been doing, um, you know, for the most part, integrated marketing for the last, you know, uh, 12 plus years, right? And I think the first, this is the, the first time I've ever heard anybody reference Voltron. And I think it's probably <laughs> the greatest reference um, that I've heard in all my years to date. So I, I tip my hat to you, Mr. Hampson, on coming up with a fantastic analogy for uh, integrated marketing. I'll agree. You, you can Voltron, look So that's amazing. I, and yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to follow that up and now I kind of don't feel adequate. But (laughs) Uh, I was just going to mention that uh, in my role, I haven't really explained my role very much on these podcasts. Um, So I do firm marketing for the entire agency. And by doing that, I am kind of like a one-stop integrated team in myself. So I do social, I do graphic design, I do a little bit of PR with our uh, expert help in the office. So I can see all sides, and I see how this one brand voice comes through on all channels and really brings it together. Hopefully, if I'm doing it right, and I think I am, we have one voice that Spark speaks from, and our competitors will know who we are, and we will really rock their socks. So do you guys have any examples of some good integrated campaigns that you've seen? Have you seen something on TV and then seen it on social or anything? I can I can just one comes to mind um, that I worked on recently. Uh, I shouldn't say recently; it was actually a couple years ago. But um, I worked on an app uh, for the PGA, right? A mobile app, and basically uh, what it did was it mapped all of the golf courses, basically in the world. And so um, it would analyze, you would kind of enter in all your information about how you played a course or whatever, and then it would analyze all of that and put that into the system and kind of give you almost like kind of caddy tips, if you will, in your pocket while you're golfing to kind of improve your swing and and tell you kind of what's going on on each course and things like that. And um, I mean, it was basically, you know, a cool mobile app and we did a lot of social around it, raise awareness, but, um, you know, when I think of the parts that really took off and really solidified and the, you know, the success of this app, that actually came down to email marketing and knowing where each person was. It was, it was a pretty complex app. You can imagine you know, like it has to map where every, uh, and it has to understand where every person is on any golf course at any given time and what their kind of struggles and strengths are and how to play that around each hole. So um, before you went to the course, you would get like an email um, really telling you, you know, you'd say you're going to go play this course and it would tell you kind of all the things that you needed to know about that course and it knew where you were within the app. Oh, nice. And so um, it was it was pretty kind of complex, um, but also super fun and it really helped drive uh, a lot of the success of, of the app. And so that was with a, a nice brand and I was really excited to work on that project. Chris, have you had a favorite project you've worked on so far? Yeah, we, uh, we've worked with the clients that uh, we started out with a narrative process for them and figured out a direction that they need to go while they're breaking into the US market. Uh, and we've come up with several campaigns that we're running concurrently right now, and they really feed on one another. Uh, we redesigned their logo, which dictated what their app was gonna look like, what their uh, website copy needs to follow. Uh, as well as uh, what their social campaigns are going to be and what spaces to really place them in. That's been really rewarding because it's really been a complete transformation of this company that has come from a completely different culture and uh, country into the United States. And it's really setting it up to break out and be a real competitor for a lot of the other uh, markets that are out there that they're getting into. If you're redefining a brand, I can't see how you could do that without an integrated campaign. Oh, absolutely. Uh, The creative director has been driving a lot of uh, the visual stuff, but really uh, there's been a lot of uh, subtext and direction from narrative that has really been driving the whole thing, as well as our uh, director of uh, social media. I mean, she's setting up all the campaigns and 
where we need to place each of these very finite pieces in order to have this be a successful launch. So far, what we've been talking about is the current, present, what we're doing right now, but what is the future of integrated marketing? How's it going to evolve over time? Sure, I think that's a great question. Um, you know, right now, uh, I think that it's getting more efficient by, you know, certainly uh, by a lot of different uh, tools that we're able to use, particularly on that kind of the measurement front um, and, and the analysis front, but then also um, a lot of business intelligence tools that are being incorporated as well. So really be able to understand, um, you know, kind of attribution and where things are um, happening and where we're seeing um, pick up from or where things need to be optimized, you know, um, just being able to have that level of insight into the data analytics around integrated marketing really allows you to kind of, you know, drive the most efficient, effective campaigns you can that have the most, the biggest payoff. And so um, I just see those tools being more and more concentrated. And I see, you know, a lot of, you know, like I said, like platforms and, and business intelligence tools kind of combining together. We see a lot of acquisitions in the market now. So, um, you know, some, some tools are trying to be you know everything for everybody sometimes things get lost in that a bit but um, I still think that we're advancing at a pretty good pace so I would say that uh, the future of integrated marketing really would be more concentrated tools kind of like we, we try to concentrate the intelligence under one roof they would be concentrating more intelligence um, and and um, you know kind of opportunities under under single platforms from some of the bigger brands and so you know I see that uh, most likely we would be kind of even, and, and also letting more machines do a lot of the, the learning and execution. So everything from AI to bots, I think that those are things that are kind of trickling in now that will really be at the forefront in another few years, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I was going to jump on there and say AI is definitely going to be one of the behind the scenes tools that we're seeing that's prevailing right now. Right. It just hasn't become real commonplace yet. Mm -hmm. But I mean, bots that can do thousands of searches every hour and really be precise on the data that's coming back. Right. And then there's the opposite side, which is the client interface. Uh, I, I think that's going to be a very uh, augmented process as we're seeing technology advance so quickly. Right. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how we market to people as things come along. It's, it's how I think that's, that's certainly interesting. And also, we'll, I think will be interesting to see what would the workforce look like when we have more of that happening. And so um, as a lot of the people that do a lot of the kind of numbers crunching and data stuff right now, those probably those people will probably be more freed up to kind of use that data and, and, and think about it more from a strategic level. Yeah. And so I think that we will probably move, you know, in, in the years to come from a more of a, a doer to a more of a kind of thinker level um, and really kind of informing and and obviously the you know all the machines can can pull all the data and can even do you know some form of predictability and things like that and you know how are things going to go but what they really can't do is just creativity you know and, and really yeah. coming like you know out of the box thinking and, and and things like that so I think that that's where we as kind of marketers will will really excel you know, and look for more people that can kind of do that kind of thinking, you know, work with existing data, predictive data, modeling, but then layer on very creative kind of ways and approaches to really make something come through with a big a big splash, you know, and, and, and really be a, a strong signal through all the noise. Yeah, I kind of go in the way of the automobile industry where the assembly line has virtually been taken out of the hands of humans. Like, it's all robots. Right. And now it's mostly... Uh, Right. Uh, so how do you stand out, right? Programming and creative. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And marketing. Right. Right. And it's creative marketing campaigns. Absolutely. And so I think that we've got, yeah, exactly. We've got, we've got all of, a lot of uh, data. We've got a lot of things to work with, but um, I think where it really shines is, is when you marry the, the strategic with the creative. And that's where I've seen some of the best campaigns come to life. Mm -hmm. Okay, listeners, we've talked about some campaigns that we're interested in, but I want to know what integrated campaigns you've seen. Like, have you been online and seen an ad and then gone to Twitter and seen posts there and then be like, oh my gosh, how are they reading my mind? Uh, I want to know about those campaigns. I also want to know if you have more insight on what the future of integrated marketing looks like. And the way that you can get a hold of us is to tweet us at Spark PR, and we will talk about your comments on the next podcast. So let me know. Hit me up. All right. Thanks, Shane and Chris. Thanks very much. And we'll see you next time. Block out and see the bottom line. Rise. Spark.